Hello, everyone, and welcome to Episode 4 of Covert and Classified. I'm your host, Moonlight Graham, and today we're going to be talking about a World War II hero who, to my knowledge, has never had a Hollywood-type movie made about his adventures. Which is odd to me, because after I read his biography and investigated his exploits, he really deserves to have a Hollywood movie made about him. This is the story of Lieutenant Colonel John Malcolm Thorpe Fleming Churchill. That's one heck of a name, but certainly one that's befitting of this amazing man. John Malcolm Thorpe Fleming Churchill was also known to many as Jack Churchill, Fighting Jack, or Mad Jack Churchill, which is a nickname that is certainly more befitting for this larger-than-life character. And before I continue on with this incredible story, he is not related in any way to Winston Churchill. He was born in 1906 in the small county of Surrey, England, although I have read other stories where he might have been born in Hong Kong. Either way, he discovered he had an excellent skill set to be an archer at a young age. He even went on to participate in the World Archery Championships in Norway. In 1926, he was commissioned into the 2nd Battalion, the Manchester Regiment. This would be the start of his adventurous career that would begin when he joined a battalion in Rangoon and was sent to do a signals course in Pune, India. On completion of his courses in Pune, he drove a Zenith motorcycle 1,500 miles across the Indian subcontinent, crashing into a water buffalo at one point. If you look at a Zenith motorcycle, you can see they were not necessarily the most comfortable rides you would want to take somewhere on a long-distance trip, especially on a bumpy dirt road through the Burmese jungle in the 1920s. Everything in life was a challenge to Jack. In Burma, he used to cross rivers with his motorcycle by way of railway bridges that had open sleepers by stepping onto the sleepers and pushing his bike along the rails. Not exactly safe, since if he took one wrong step, he could plunge down into the river below, not to mention a train could unexpectedly show up, forcing him to bail off to the side. Lucky for him, that never happened. And for those of you who don't know what a sleeper is, it's the wooden planks or ties on which the metal rails are resting on top of that uniformly hold the gauge of the tracks to distribute the weight of the train and reduce vibration for the train as well. While with his regiment, Mad Jack Churchill became an excellent bagpipe player under the tutorship of the pipe major of the Cameron Highlanders. He was also awarded the first of his service medals, the Indian General Service Medal with the Burma Clasp. Churchill's superior officers didn't always enjoy how he would behave during his service. A good example of this was the day on which he appeared on a parade carrying an umbrella, a mortal sin in any army. When asked by the battalion officer what he meant by such outlandish behavior, Churchill replied, "'Because it's raining, sir,' an answer not calculated to endear him to the frozen soul of any superior battalion officer." Mad Jack was a man destined to lead other men in battle, and there was no war happening yet to keep him interested in army life. His restlessness and frustration would cause him to do such things like bagpiping the orderly office of the guard room at three o'clock in the morning, much to the chagrin of any sleeping men nearby. When he was back in England, army life seemed dull, and Churchill left in order to travel and build a career as an actor and entertainer. Churchill left the army in 1936 and worked as a newspaper editor in Nairobi, Kenya and as a male model for magazine ads. He used his archery and bagpipes talents to play a small role in The Drum and the 1924 film The Thief of Baghdad, as well as appearing in the 1938 film A Yank at Oxford. He took second place in the 1938 military piping competition at the Aldershot Tattoo, and in 1939, he represented Great Britain at the World Archery Championships in Oslo. When World War II broke out, Churchill resumed his commission after Poland was invaded by Germany. Since he remained on the reserve officers list, he was recalled to his original regiment and was part of the expeditionary force to France. Churchill armed himself with his bow and arrows, a Scottish broadsword, and his bagpipes. Mad Jack would say and claim 
that any officer who goes into action without his sword is improperly dressed. Mad Jack knew that the bow and arrow was an extraordinarily effective weapon in his skilled hands, as it was silent and accurate up to 200 yards. In May of 1940, Churchill and his unit, the Manchester Regiment, ambushed a German patrol near La Pignette, France, roughly 84 miles northeast of Lyon. As the small German force approached a hill overlooking the village, Churchill gave the signal to attack by knocking a barbed arrow in his bow and sending it flying into the chest of a shocked German sergeant, thus making Mad Jack the only soldier known to have felled an enemy with a longbow in World War II. Moments later, the confused Germans were cut down by rifle fire from Churchill's men. More Germans would later arrive, and Mad Jack then used two machine guns to fight back until they ran out of ammunition. Despite Mad Jack's best efforts to resist other attacks from the Germans, his company was cut off and in trouble. He managed to secretly lead the remainder of his company to safety through the enemy lines at night and return them safely to the brigade despite being shot in the shoulder. Churchill was awarded the Military Cross for his actions that day. After fighting at Dunkirk and back in England, he volunteered for the British Commandos, where he was made second in command of the number no. 3 Commando Unit. With this unit, he participated in a daring raid, ironically named Operation Archery, against the German garrison at Vagsoy, Norway in December of 1941. In what would become very characteristic, Mad Jack disembarked from the landing craft dressed in a kilt and playing his bagpipes to the tune of March of the Cameron Men before throwing a grenade, drawing his sword, and leading his men into the capture of several shore batteries. For his actions at Vagsoy, Churchill received his second military cross. In July of 1943, as a commanding officer, he led the number no. 2 commando unit from their landing site at Catania in Sicily. With his trademark Scottish kilt and broadsword slung around his waist, a long bow and arrows around his neck and his bagpipes under his arm, Mad Jack was ordered to capture a German observation post outside the town of Molina. With the help of a corporal, he infiltrated the town, captured the German post while threatening to kill a captured German with his broadsword, and took 42 stunned and shocked German prisoners, including a German mortar squad. Churchill led the men and the prisoners back down the pass with the wounded being carried on carts pushed by the German prisoners. He commented that it was an image from the Napoleonic Wars that gave him that idea. Churchill later walked back to the town to retrieve his sword, which he had lost in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the German regiment. On his way there, he encountered a disoriented American patrol mistakenly walking towards enemy lines. When the NCO in command of the American patrol refused to turn around, Churchill told him that he was going to go his own way and that he would not be coming back for a bloody third time to rescue them. He received the Distinguished Service Order for leading that ballsy and heroic action at Salerno. As part of McLean mission in 1944, he led the commandos in Yugoslavia to support Joseph Broz Tito's partisans from the Adriatic island of V. He was ordered to raid the German-held island of Brock and organized a motley army of 1,500 partisans, 43 commandos, and one troop from the 40 commandos unit for the raid. The landing was unopposed, but on seeing the gun emplacements from which they later encountered German fire, the partisans decided to defer the attack until the following day. Churchill once again got on his bagpipes, signaling the remaining commandos to battle. Churchill then decided to withdraw from the night and to relaunch the attack the following morning. The following morning, a flanking attack was launched by 43 commandos with Churchill leading the elements from the 40 commando unit. The partisans remained at the landing area. After coming under heavy fire, only Churchill and six others managed to reach their objective. A mortar shell then landed and killed or wounded everyone but Churchill who was playing will ye not come back again on his bagpipes as the Germans advanced. He was then knocked unconscious by grenades and captured. Believing that he might be related to Winston Churchill, German military intelligence officers had Churchill flown to Berlin for interrogation. 
Afterwards, he was transferred to a special compound for prominent POWs, including some actual or suspected relatives of Winston Churchill within the grounds of Sachsenhausen concentration camp. In September of 1944, Mad Jack and three Royal Air Force officers who happened to be survivors of the Great Escape and Major Johnny Dodge escaped Sachsenhausen by using a tunnel they had dug in secret. Churchill and Royal Air Force officer Bertram James attempted to walk the Baltic coast. They were unfortunately recaptured near the German coastal city of Rostock, a few kilometers from the sea. In late April of 1945, Churchill and about 140 other prominent concentration camp inmates were transferred to Tyrol and were guarded by German SS troops. A delegation of prisoners told senior German officers that they feared they would be executed by the SS guards. A German army unit commanded by Captain Wichard von Alvensleben moved in to protect the prisoners. Outnumbered, the SS guards moved out and left the prisoners behind. The prisoners were released, and after the departure of the Germans, Churchill walked 93 miles to Verona, Italy, where he did meet up with an American armored unit. As the Pacific War with Japan was still on, Churchill was sent to Burma where some of the largest land battles against Japan were being fought. By the time Churchill reached India, Hiroshima and Nagasaki had been hit with atomic bombs and the war ended. Churchill was said to be unhappy with the sudden end of the war and said, If it wasn't for those damn Yanks, we could have kept the war going for another ten years. But Mad Jack was far from being finished with his adventurous career. After the Second War had ended, Churchill qualified as a parachutist and transferred to the Seaforth Highlanders. He was soon posted to Mandatory Palestine as an executive officer of the 1st Battalion of the Highland Light Infantry. In the spring of 1948, just before the end of the British Mandate in the region, he became involved in yet another conflict. Along with 12 of his soldiers, he attempted to assist the Hadassa medical convoy, which came under attack by Arab forces. Churchill, one of the first men on the scene, banged on a bus and offered to evacuate members of the convoy in an APC despite the British military orders to keep out of the fight. His offer was refused in the belief that the Jewish Haganah would come to their aid in an organized rescue. When no relief arrived, Churchill and his 12 men provided cover fire against the attacking Arab forces. Two of the convoy trucks caught fire and 77 of the 79 people inside of them were killed. This event is known today as the Hadassah Medical Convoy Massacre. Mad Jack would later say, About 150 insurgents armed with weapons varying from blunderbusses and old flintlocks came to modern Sten and Bren guns, took over behind a cactus patch in the grounds of the American colony. I went out and faced them. About 250 riflemen were on the edge of our property shooting at the convoy. I begged them to desist from using the grounds of the American colony for such a dastardly purpose. The main road on Mount Scopus was then named Churchill Boulevard in his honor. In 1952, Mad Jack would again be cast in yet another Hollywood movie. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer produced the film Ivanhoe, which was shot in Britain featuring Churchill's old rowing companion, Robert Taylor. The studio hired Churchill to appear as an archer, shooting from the walls of Warwick Castle. In later years, Churchill served as an instructor at the Land Air Warfare School in Australia, where he became a passionate surfer. In 1955, he was the first man to ride a tidal bore, doing so on a five-foot bore wave for over a mile. For those of you who don't know what a tidal bore is, it's a wall of water that surges upriver with the advancing high tide. This was accomplished by designing and building his own 16-foot toothpick surfboard. In writing that tidal bore, Churchill innovated freshwater surfing and established the idea that surfing could take place outside traditional coastal areas. It took years for the idea to gain traction, but tidal bores are now ridden in Brazil, China, Great Lakes, Munich, and Jackson Hole. Churchill retired from the Army in 1959, but even in retirement, his eccentricity would continue. 
As he would travel home from work on the train he took, Jack startled train guards and passengers by throwing his briefcase out of the train window each day on the ride home. He would later explain that he was tossing his case into his own backyard of his house that the train passed by so that he would not have to carry it on his walk home from the train station. During this time, he also enjoyed sailing coal-fired ships on the Thames between Richmond and Oxford, as well as making radio-controlled model warships. Mad Jack Churchill died on March 8, 1996 at 89 years old in the county of Surrey, England. In March of 2014, the Royal Norwegian Explorers Club published a book that featured Churchill, naming him as one of the finest explorers and adventurers of all time. I would have to agree. I hope you enjoyed listening to this fantastic true story of Mad Jack Churchill as much as I enjoyed telling it. Thanks for watching Covert and Classified with Moonlight Graham, and I'll see you all next time. Oh,